Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here at the home of Jensen Fleet. I'm joined by Republic of Ireland International and Liverpool women's captain, Nee Fahey. You're here, you're after getting your new car. Um, first, tell us about your new car. <laughs> Very nice. It's a lovely uh, Peugeot 308. And uh, yeah, looking forward to some many safe miles in it. Yeah, so if you see her knocking around the roads of Liverpool, make sure you give her away. <laughs> um, I suppose, Neve, coming off the back, it's been a good weekend. It's been a good summer. Unfortunately, you're injured, so give us an update on the injury so far. Uh, yeah, just uh, unfortunately, calf uh, injury for me, kind of similar to the one I had before the World Cup. So, um, yeah, six weeks, uh, not too bad, but just bad timing, really, with the start of the season, WSL and obviously the Irish game uh, at the Aviva. But um, no, it was a great result against Northern Ireland and great to see the girls start off with a comfortable 3 0 win. So, yeah, it, it was really good, really positive. Um, I can't have you here and not talk about the World Cup. Yeah. How, uh, like the whole journey from start to finish. I know, look, results maybe weren't the best. Uh, obviously went out early, but in terms of the whole experience and everything like that, from you've been around the women's field for a long time and to go from where you came from to that kind of give us a, a brief overhaul of kind of how that was being and the whole journey yeah I think it's probably just started to sink in now really uh you know what the summer actually meant um when you're in it it was very much game mode and uh yeah trying to trying to get to the to the knockout stages and you know I think we put up good performances in what was a really tough group and unfortunately couldn't get out um so we have a bit of regrets about that but uh ultimately it was it was an amazing summer and uh, for me personally and all the people that have been there for a long time, the likes of Anya Gorman as well, uh, it, was, it was always our dream to get to major finals. So we've done that and um, yeah, I think we, we did ourselves proud. We did the country proud. There was an amazing support from the Irish public. So uh, the legacy it's left now for the young kids coming through, hopefully now it's their aspirations and dreams to go and put on the, the Irish jersey and play at major tournaments. So. Uh, there's so much to kind of probably digest, but it's it's been an amazing summer. Talk to me about that, the homecoming. I was there, it was a brilliant day, yeah. but from, like, I wasn't up on the stage. I was at the bottom level of it, but even looking back, it, it was just amazing. And just to see how many people turned out for that. Um, There was a lot of naysayers saying people won't turn up because of results and stuff like that, but I think the, the public showed the support. It was, yeah, it was unbelievable. Like, just to come back to a homecoming after, you know, we didn't get through to the next the next phase of, of the tournament but then to have a homecoming and to see that outpouring of support and showed how much like the country got behind us um the sea of green on O'Connell Street so I think yeah those are the stuff that you'll you'll remember for the rest of your life so uh we had unbelievable support in Australia as well um so many fans traveled we packed out the stadiums it was just it was all Irish people there at one stage especially in Perth uh the support was like actually it was blow your mind thinking back about it and then at home as well um flags bunting everything up so yeah but it's it's overwhelming really but no the Irish supporters best supporters in the world and when it comes to major tournaments we see why yeah and then you know you kind of take that momentum from that then obviously going look this fear is obviously her time's up now as manager Ireland's come in as interim. There's been a lot of drama, obviously, with, with um, the press conference and stuff last week. But I think from your own point of view, how, how important do you think it is to just kind of move on from that now? I think it was good to get the results against Northern Ireland and then just concentrate and kind of going forward from now on. Yeah, there's been, you know, there's been so much talk off the field and really as players, all we want to do is concentrate on the pitch. So... Uh, I think the result now as well against Northern Ireland and uh, yeah, we had a, an amazing time under Vera qualifying for the World Cup and we had a, a great run but we're going in a different direction and um, yeah it's a new era it's a new dawn and it's about looking forward so uh, yeah the, the result against Northern Ireland will say kickstart that so it's it's to the future now and um, yeah let's see what happens for the rest of the games in the group I think you know we've a really good chance of well not a good chance we should top the group really to be honest and uh, sets up nicely then trying to qualify for the Euros yeah I mean, talk to us about coming to some of the performances the other day obviously Tyler Toland player of the match if she was excellent and to have her back in is obviously brilliant then you've got Caitlin Hayes is probably kind of playing in your role there but um. This, this seems to be a bit of a depth now in the squad which is good because it just means competitions for places and I think then players are always going to be coming in uh, having to raise their game to, to get into the squad or into the starting 11 yeah exactly um, the two girls done fantastic um, 
and uh, like you said it's it's exactly what we need we need strength and depth and and competition to to push the team forward um and yeah we're we're building the squad all the time you're seeing new faces coming in and and Eileen done a fantastic job the girls looked you know very prepared and the quality of play as well was outstanding given that you know it's a first camp after World Cup there could be you know a bit of a, a drag after the World Cup but you know the girls done brilliantly and I thought yeah you could really see the patterns of play coming out as well um so it was a solid performance and yeah I suppose it's just about building on that keeping the competition high and yeah trying to get us as strong as possible for qualifying for the Euros. I also think as well as that to add to that just the fact that the younger players like Abby Lark and Izzy Atkinson getting the opportunity to go to the World Cup you know getting the experience there um I think that's only going to bode well for them going forward in terms of their development and now that you might start seeing them kind of raise their game now as well. Yeah uh, I thought Abby came on and looked very very bright as well and um Th- that experience for them I think you know for me even just being at the World Cup it, w- it gave me a hunger to be like oh I, you know I'd love to get to the next tournament so I can imagine how they're feeling right now and that buzz and excitement that they're going to have you know going for another tournament so there are two players as well and the, the future is very bright they're they're not the only two there's so many young players now coming through so um yeah it's it's, it's an exciting time for for women's football in Ireland. Yeah, just just on that exercise, you touched on the Aviva. Obviously, you didn't get the chance to to play there, but that must be one of your bucket list moments to to be able to do that. And hopefully, there'll be future moments to see Ireland playing in the Aviva again. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to play there. I've never played there, and so that was disappointing personally for me. But uh, I think there should be opportunity to play there again for the Irish team because you saw the crowd. Um, thirty six thousand. Uh, fantastic crowd filled the Aviva as well, and uh, that's. That's an amazing historic occasion, but I think you know, this team has has got that kind of backing now, and and another game there, the Aviva with that crowd behind us, yeah, it's it's growing all the time, and it's something you'd like to see something more regularly of for sure. Yeah, the team just seems to be constantly breaking records, breaking boundaries, and stuff like that. But from your own point of view, when do you think we we could potentially see a back playing? I suppose for Liverpool firstly, and then I'd imagine it'd be the next international window or or the one after that. Well, yeah, prob- what's it looking like? It's, provisionally, uh, yeah, provisionally, exactly. You always have to say provisionally with injuries. Uh, probably realistically, the start of November. So yeah, uh, but focus now is just get back healthy, get back playing for Liverpool. Uh, do well there and, and we'll see what happens so that's that's kind of where I'm focused at the minute OK well listen we won't keep you too much longer uh, you know, to get, get you back to Liverpool and continue the rehab so listen thanks very much for your time good luck at the rehab and hopefully we'll see you back at the pitch soon. cheers Paul thank you All right. cheers guys